Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman, a channel of satire, comedy, and entertainment. Basically, just me calling it the way I see it. Now, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and share the video. It's very important you share the video. And if you don't like what you see, be sure to leave a comment down below at what you didn't like. And maybe I'll take that comment and make a funny video about what you said. I notice we don't have a lot of challengers on that. Um, folks, I know there's other videos out there dealing with this. Um, but I just can't resist. Uh, mainly what I want to show in this video is the absurdity of current day apostles. This is the... Bethel Church TV conference where uh, Pastor Marlene convinced all the apostles to allow witchcraft into the church. And the apostles lack such discernment, they had no idea what they were doing. Or did they? Let's take a look at this. And like I said, I, I know this video has been done. I want to give my two cents. It's mainly what Che says about apostles that I really want to focus in on. Because this whole thing about current day apostles is just, it's making me need an aspirin. And you guys know I need one after just about every video I do. So let's get into the video. You know, we're going to do some binding and loosening. And one of the things that I've learned in the last maybe around 10 years, that apostles have authority to make the decrees and declaration and... Um, now, when he says decrees and declarations, folks, what he is telling you is that as an apostle, he has the authority to go around the Bible or to change the Bible or to add to the Bible. That's what he's saying. See, that's why they need current day apostles, because the things they are doing are not in the scriptures. But an apostle could do these things. This man, Che, is who I really want to focus on in this video. It's not the witchcraft. I mean, that's bad enough. I want to focus on Che because there's some interesting things about him we need to discover. Folks, do you know who this is? Yes, Todd Bentley. Todd Bentley is an interesting and frightful character. He, uh... He was at one time the sweetheart of the new apostolic reformation. I mean, this guy was on his way to being inducted into the International Coalition of Apostles. There's just one problem. This man was so eat up with secret immoral sin that it wasn't, I mean, it was sad. Let's take a look at his induction or coronation and who led the ceremony to accept this man as an apostle. See, these apostles appoint each other as apostles. Jesus ain't involved in this, folks. No, sir, don't you believe it? How deeply honored I am that John would just come from Africa and make time to be here, Bill. I mean, it's a miracle that Peter Wagner, Bill Johnson, John Arnaud, Todd Bentley, and these uh, distinguished apostles would all be able to make it all together at one time, one place. That's just, with our international commitments, that's a miracle in itself. It would appear that they all wanted to take part in this induction into the Brotherhood of Apostles. And um, I also feel, Todd, significant that um, two things. One, that this would be on... June 23rd, Bob Jones prophesied that you will go to a whole different level. June 22nd, remember that? So here's the day after, and we're and you're going to a whole different level. Isaiah 22, 22. Uh, he's giving you the keys of David. He's opening doors that no man can close. And so it's very, very significant that this is taking place. And it was not because of Bob's prophecy; it was just based on our calendar. But I think it's significant that it would be here on this day, a day after that word was prophesied. I also think it's significant that we have three generations coming together. God's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, you know, we're old enough to be your dad. <laughs> and Peter's old enough to be your grandfather. And so, 
So it was wonderful that we could come together, three generations. So I want to proceed recognizing that God has chosen you and appointed you to bear much and lasting fruit in this Lakeland revival and revival around the world, recognizing that he has called you as an Ephesian for an evangelist and a revivalist moving in signs and wonders, knowing that you have walked in a manner worthy of the Lord, what did Che just say? That this man is walking in the manner of the Lord? Yet he was doing all these things with this young lady. From what I was able to find, she was the babysitter and nanny to their children. Now you can see in the upper left here, uh, this is his, Todd's now ex-wife. <clears throat> and I blotted out the faces of his children because that's what you're supposed to do. But uh, I wonder why these prophets, these super powerful apostles of the Most High God, didn't see this coming. This is Che. He is the one who says apostles are powerful. They can decree things. They can declare things, yeah, but you didn't see this coming, which kind of makes me believe you guys just tap anyone you want to into apostleship. Where was the background check on this guy? Boy, look at Kundalini just having its way with this guy. Pleasing Jesus in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the intimacy and knowledge of God. We, as your brothers, there it is, folks, we, as your brothers, it's all about the apostles flexing their muscles to tap in other apostles who are not worthy of the title. First of all, because it's not scriptural after the original apostles died, but these people right here are demonstrating why man cannot choose man for the office of apostle. This is something the Lord Jesus Christ does because he knows who is worthy of that title. Che doesn't know what Todd was doing, or if he did, he turned a blind eye. Now, there's some infighting that went on after the debacle that is Todd Bentley. We'll talk about that later. And your friend... We have a deep love for you, Shauna, your whole family. We just esteem you. We are here to stand with you, support you. Folks, you know what's so sad about this? Look at look at his, look at his eyes. This whole time, he knows he is living a sinful life. He knows it. Soon, everyone will know it. But at this point. The investigation showed he had been having extramarital issues or failures in morality for a while. And his doctrine was absolutely heretical. Kicking and punching people in order to heal them? Yeah, that's not good. But he knew it. Look at, look at his eyes. He's just got everybody fooled. And guess what? The apostles don't know it. Now, in the good book we call the Bible, apostles knew things, okay, because Jesus appointed them. They were wise. They knew things. The Spirit of God told them things. So out of all these five or six false apostles, God didn't tell a single one of them or did some of them know it, and they just turned a blind eye to it. And we are here to commission you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the power of Jesus' name, with special oil from Chuck Pierce. It's called Revival Oil. Chuck could not make it, but he sent this FedEx special oil for you. He's in Africa, and so we anoint you and commission you in Jesus' name. We bless you today, Todd Bentley. You're a friend. You're a man of God. You're a man of prayer. You're a man of the Spirit. You love the anointing. And I would say that it's not just the Lakeland Revival, but the whole world 
that goes into revival. And you're leading an amazing charge. And multitudes are getting in behind you and saying, come on, I'm going to go with you. And so we bless all of that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for raising up this young man. He just thanked the Holy Spirit for raising up this young man. They, he has them all fooled because they are not apostles or they would know better. This is how disgusting this is. This brings shame to the name of Jesus Christ and the apostles who were martyred and died for the name of Jesus Christ. They, I don't want to say they earned the title of apostles, but Jesus knew he could trust them with that title. There is no reason why this man should have been called apostle, except that the whole band of these people are corrupt. They are corrupt from the very core. Who anointed these people apostles? I want to know who the first one was who said, you know what, I'm an apostle, I'm going to start anointing other apostles. I, I, I'm, I'm researching that and I'm close to finding out. But right now I can't find out where this actually started and who thought they could just deem themselves an apostle. To lead such a mighty charge around the world and to partner with God TV and all that has happened here in the last uh, several months now, three months almost. We bless it in the name of Jesus, and we stand with you. Yeah, he just got welcomed into the International Coalition of Apostles, the good old boys club where, you know, it's sort of like the golf course where only other members can invite you in. This is, black, this is, this is so heretical that... You've, you've got to wonder why lightning doesn't fall from the sky. I mean, if the apostles are able to look down and see what is now called an apostle of God, their heart must be breaking. It, it, I can just imagine the Lord walking up behind the apostles. This is my imagination. And kind of putting his arm around the apostles saying, one day I will judge this. Because they bring shame on the name or the title of apostle. And we encourage you, and we honor you. When David wanted Uriah killed, he sent him into battle and then withdrew from him. As a company of people, we refuse to do that. Many revivals through history have been cut short of their intention, of God's destiny and intention over individuals because of jealousies and fears that get stirred up in the people of God, and we refuse to do that. We shape the course of history. 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 This proves my point that they feel that when they prophesy, they are speaking things into existence. We shape the course of history. Where is Jesus? Somebody please point him out. By partnering with you, giving honor where it's due, you welcome the glory as well as anybody I've ever seen in my life. I long to learn from you in that. And I bless you, and I pray with the rest of these that the measure of glory would increase, that Moses would no longer be considered the high water mark where the glory shone from his face, but instead the revelation of the goodness of God would change the face of the church, and that he would use your voice, he would use your grace, your anointing to alter the face of the church before this world, that the goodness of the Lord would be seen once again. I pray this over you in Jesus' name. Folks, Bill just said he does not want Moses to be the high watermark any longer in our faith as far as the glory of God being on somebody. He wants Todd to do it. By goodness gracious, Todd, let's hear it for Todd, the one who is in secret sin adulterous sin 
That's the discernment these people have. Zero. You should be running from these people. We're going to... We're going to let Todd soak. But I would like to have the apostles who are standing with Todd. Any of you want to share a prophetic word or anything? A prophetic word. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. Jesus is about to speak. Jesus is going to call his sin out in front of everybody. Jesus is going to let him have it and say, Todd, you are in secret sin. Run from sexual sin. Flee from it. That's what my word tells you. That's what Jesus is going to say, because this man is about to speak the words Jesus gave him. Let him have it, Lord. Yes. For the Lord would say unto thee that this day you have loosened upon this earth, yea, what I have wanted for centuries to come forth, a kingly anointing which will bring in money, money, money. Oh, did he just say that? Did he just say that? People! What are you thinking? You still follow these people. Are you, do you have no discernment? Are you really saved? Have you not read the word? A kingly anointing to bring in money, money, money. That is what he just said. And you follow this man. You give him your hard-earned money when you could be helping the poor. Sending it to St. Jude Hospital. Going down to your local soup kitchen and feeding the poor. No, you'll send these people your money. You should be ashamed. You need to check yourself. You need to pray and fast and find out exactly what your spiritual condition is and then you need to correct it. I'm telling you in love. This is disgusting. Because the businessman will rise up and they will go forth under this anointing and no more will they stay hidden in the shadows but they shall go forth into the political, into the political, into the political, into the political. Folks, you know this is not a word of God because Jesus knows how to say political, not political. This is a false apostle, false prophet clown. He is a jester. The world, into the business world, into the military world, and cha great changes shall take place, saith the Lord, because this night is a night when you started out speaking your first words about the kingdom of God. Folks, if you had ever wanted there to be a chance to prove to everyone that a prophecy from thus saith the Lord was actually legitimate, this was the time. Remember when Nathan went to King David to tell him, hey, I know what you've been doing with Bathsheba? See, he knew the Lord revealed it to him and sent him to correct David. That was prophecy. That was a move of God. This right here was nothing more then sucking up for some of the limelight, and let's jump on the Todd Bentley bandwagon because even Bill Johnson wants to learn from him. See, Todd Bentley was hot as fire at this time. People loved him. I don't know if it was because he had tattoos and he looked like a biker or what, but he was smoking at this time, and everybody wanted in, and they were so quick to invite him in. Oh, we got Todd Bentley. We got Todd Bentley. Yeah, you got Todd Bentley and you got all his baggage too. But this was not a prophecy from God because I cannot believe Jesus, if he had really spoken through this man, wouldn't have said, Todd, I've told you, I've convicted you. You won't listen. You are not an apostle. You are not worthy of the title of apostle because of your secret sin. That is what the prophecy should have been had it really been from the Lord. Let's hear another prophecy from a prophetess. Let's hear what the Lord is speaking through her. Todd, the Spirit of God. 
God says years from now, people will look at this time and they will recognize it as when their God showed up and created within the church a new heart, says the Lord. Missed again. You are not a prophet. And I will Genesis in the midst of the chaos in the world today. And I will not just bring a mending, but I will bring forth that which is new, that which is dedicated, that which is uh, uh, decided, that which is pure. And I will heal the corruptness of the heart, says God. And the Lord says that this is the heart that I will not despise. And as David cried unto me, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I have released a cry within my church, says the Lord, that has begun to release its desperateness and said, I can't live without your presence. I can't live without your glory. I'm undone and I'm naked without your presence. No program will be a substitute. And the Spirit of God says, history, says the Lord, will measure it by heart. Folks, is this what's passing off as prophecy nowadays? We know without a doubt that at this time, <clears throat> this man was or had been immoral. There was a history. It's been proven. And that at this time, at this convention, he was with the girl I showed you in the picture who later became his second wife. We know he was living in sin, yet none of these Prophets or apostles heard from the Lord to correct this man. This is exactly why the sinners make fun of our God. This is why, right here, because the false prophet and the false apostle is destroyed. Right, my bird even agrees. They are destroying the faith. People don't know how to defend it. How can you defend this clownery? I tell you what you can do. You can call it for what it is. A bunch of lies. A bunch of manipulation. A bunch of false doctrine. A bunch of false prophets and apostles. Call it what it is and quit supporting these people. But you know what? They're growing like wildfire. The NAR is growing like wildfire. And this is my opinion. This is the great falling away. This is the great falling away the Lord talked about. Okay? It's not necessarily people saying, I reject Jesus. They're falling away into false doctrine. And they're in an area where they are outside of God. They think they're inside of God. See, that's where the devil wants people. He wants you to think you're saved and you're good and you're righteous. Because even though you're really not, you won't go searching to be any more righteous than you think you are right now. That's the great deception I think of that was spoken of. Uh, I'm sorry, not deception, delusion, the strong delusion that is sent. Folks, how, how can you tell me you are a prophet and you miss the blatant sin this man was in? We didn't see it. When I say it's blatant, I mean it's known to God. And you said God spoke through you. And you come up with, you're going to make money, money, money. And, oh, this is what I've been waiting. History will judge the heart. This lady has no idea what she's talking about. I don't even know who she is. I don't know who half of these people are because I'm just now Johnny come lately on this bandwagon. But you know what? You're going to be seeing more of me. This is disgusting. This has to be rooted out of the church like a rotten spot in a potato. You got to dig it out and get rid of it. It's going to rot in the whole potato. When I get loud, my bird gets loud. I don't have a nice studio. Pray for me. So, folks, all that was to show you who Che is. I don't know how to say his last name. On. Papa Che is what the lady Maureen calls him. So now you're going to see the witchcraft in the church. But I wanted you to see who's leading the charge yet 
again. This time he's bringing witchcraft into the church. Why does this man have any followers? He totally blew the whole Todd Bentley thing, which was disgusting, if I've not said it enough yet. Now he's heading up the witchcraft in the church. He's leading the charge. Watch it for yourself. Roll it. We're going to do some binding and loosening. And one of the things that I've learned in the last maybe around 10 years, that apostles have authority to make the decrees and declaration. And um, it's something that God gives. And I've seen it work in so many practical ways. Well, Pastor Marlene got a prophetic vision right before this event and she saw us doing a prophetic act that was going to be very, very historic. So thank you for hanging in there and staying with us. But I believe that this is a very crucial time. So why don't you share your vision, then we'll do the apostolic decree. Come in. Okay. So I am an artist. I told you this. One of the movies that has really touched my heart is Lord of the Rings. Folks, a movie about witchcraft has really touched her heart. Folks, I was in law enforcement for 20 years. This is what we call a clue. Now, everybody understands. If you know Lord of the Rings, everybody understands what's in my hand. Everybody understands what's in my hand. And during this process, I've been asking God, show me the act. Show me the act. Let me understand what you were saying. And when Pastor Bill started speaking, I saw the Father's heart just opening his arms, opening his arms. And then when Papa Che came forward, I saw the Christ and the sacrifice he did with the Korean community and with the black community during the LA riots. And then when I heard Ed, Pastor Ed speak, I heard what happened with the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia being the tool of the Holy Spirit, active in the community. And then I heard Pastor, Pastor Terry coming and speaking for the African-American community. And I heard myself speak why he asked me to do that. Normally, it would only be scriptures. But the Lord told me I needed to repent for the participation I had with the racist spirit in America. So I'm going to ask us right now to all grab a hold of this in our hand. Every single one of us. But from the Father right here. We are going to lift the staff and we will command the spirit not only to leave, but he shall not pass. Now, if you heard what Apostle Savosa said, he said that you need to oil your door. So I encourage you, if you haven't done this in the proper order, you must put oil in your door and then go in front and repeat this act with us. Folks, it's not enough. She brought witchcraft into the church. She wants you to take it home and do it at your door where you walk in and out every day. She wants you to bring witchcraft to your house. How? Lord, I need mercy and I pray mercy on these people. How do you keep from passing judgment on them when they so blaspheme your holy name in everything they do? That the spirit of racists may leave your house. So she assumes everybody is a racist because you'll find out later she says that we all took part in racism. Well, first of all, lady, you don't know me and I'm not a racist. And second of all, not everything bad is a spirit. There is no spirit of racism, okay? See, here's what they do. Here's what people like her do. They give everything a spirit. Oh, he has a spirit of gambling. Oh, she has a spirit of buying. She has a spirit of watching soap operas. She has a spirit of gossip. He has a spirit of pride. He has a spirit of neglecting his family to go play golf or riding the boat. You know why? Because then you can blame it on a spirit and you never have to deal with your own heart. The Bible says sin starts in the heart of man. 
That's where sin starts. It is not a spirit jumping on you and living inside you because you're a Christian, right? See, if you give it, if you give it over to a spirit, you got somebody to blame other than this person over here. Because if we tell them they're a sinner and they're going to hell, they may go to another church and take their Benjamins with them. That's what this is about, people. Whether you participated as a victim or as someone who did it, we all did it. For our country to be where it is right now, we all did it. But we will say together, no more, no more, no more. So on the count of three. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to. So Che's not through. He, he's not through destroying his credibility as an apostle and, in my opinion, a Christian. Well, two things. I think it's important for you to share the vision of Gandalf, putting the stake down because that. that oh, OK. So now it's not enough that you're doing this clownery in church. You want her to actually recite and relive the witchcraft and speak it to the followers in your congregation? Is that what you just did, Papa Che? So for those of you who didn't see the movie, so this happens in the fellowship. In the fellowship of the ring. In the fellowship of the ring, at some point, Gandalf stands up and he is in the middle of this, this tomb type of place. And the demon that's been holding court there has, has killed everyone, pretty much, that used to live there. It was the dwarves. He's killed them all. And at, when the demon comes after Gandalf, even the demons flee. Mm. The demons flee. They start climbing the walls. And out of nowhere, Gandalf realizes the only thing that will stop this demon is if he stands there and confronts it. Toe to toe, eye to eye, and tells him, this is the line. And the demon is in full authority, in full manifestation of its presence. It's just roaring in front of Gandalf. And Gandalf stands in his authority in front of the demon and says it. The first time he hits it and it doesn't happen. The second time, Gandalf does it again. And still the demon is not obeying. And at the third time, Gandalf puts both of his hands on the staff. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I said. And he hits it. And that authority is what we are talking about that can only be released by an apostolic decree. Folks, this woman just lied right to your face. A bold face lie. Casting out demons is not reserved for apostles. It's not. Let, let's just look at some quick, quick Bible verses. All right. Signs will accompany those who have believed. Mark 16, 17. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Huh. Well, who is that to? Those who have believed. I don't see the word apostle in there anywhere. She lied to you. She lied to you. Why does anyone follow her? Many will... Uh, Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name and perform miracles? Now, granted, these are lost people who are saying this. We, we know what this verse means. But that just goes to show you that a demon, it's not the only way to cast out a demon is by an apostle. She lied. Let's look at Luke 9, 49. Luke 9, 49. John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to prevent him because he's does, he does not follow along with us. Okay, so this is not a, a follower of the apostles in Jesus. It was just someone. Someone. You know what, you know what casts out demons? Folks, it ain't you. It ain't you. It's the name of Jesus that you use. You're not casting anyone out as far as a demon. The demons leave because of the name of Jesus. 
That's why they leave. This woman just lied to you. She is disqualified to preach or teach or prophesy or apostolize, if that's even a word. Now to my last point with this lady. And this, folks, this will slip by you if you're not careful. You have got to watch this when dealing with false prophets, teachers, and all that. What she just did is she took an apostle of God and a witch in a movie and made them equal in her example. She just made a movie about a witch. Biblical. That's what's so wrong with these people. They say anything because it sounds good and it moves the crowd. Did you hear the people in the crowd hooping and hollering for a show about witchcraft? This is the great falling away. Folks, if you've heard me in my other videos, I told you that I was in law enforcement and I learned to listen to what people are not saying. Let me tell you what she didn't tell you about this scene in the movie where Gandalf confronts the demon and takes authority like an apostle. Here's what Gandalf said. This is what he said before he said, you shall not pass. They say, thou shalt not pass. She's not even quoting the movie right. It's you shall not pass. But listen to what Gandalf said before that scene. This is what he said. I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of Anor. You cannot pass. The dark fire will not avail you, flame of Udin. Go back to the shadow. She left all that out. You know why? Because it's evil and it didn't suit her purpose. Yep. The authority must be given. And that's why I revealed what we heard tonight. So... Is that clear? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So please stand up with us. So if you can stand because you're standing in authority, because you're all kings and priests, and all of us, we're an apostolic people. And all of us are apostolic people. So as an apostolic team with the authority that God's given to us. Hey, uh, Papa Che, I want you to prove that statement to me. You prove it to me. And you know you can't. It's something you guys made up. We decree and declare that racism will end. It's over in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift it up and bang it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise over. Folks, if that wasn't the biggest flop you ever saw on a church stage, even the crowd knows this is wrong. She can't whip them up into going along with it. There are people in the crowd who know in their spirit. They know this is blasphemy in the church. Thou shalt not pass. There it is, folks. No more racism in the church. It's all gone because they are apostles and they declared and decreed it. There is absolutely no more racism in the ecclesia. They, got, they did away with it. Sure. You know, it's just like when they bind Satan and then Satan gets loose somehow because in the very next service they bind him again. That's exactly what they did here, folks. The church is racism free. What a wonderful day. No more. Amen. 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 Folks, the silence from the crowd is very telling. They are not going along with this. There is no communion with the Holy Spirit. The crowd even knows, what are you doing? The crowd, folks, the, the silence is deafening. I'm sorry, we did it twice. We need one more. One more. We need you to agree with us. Why? I thought all it took was an apostle's decree or declaration. Now you're saying you need the crowd? This lady makes no sense. 
None whatsoever. And you know what? I watched this once before, and it almost looks like Bill is cringing over this. It's almost like he is saying, wow, this is too far. Okay. On the count of three. On three. Shout with us. One, two, three. Thou shalt not pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, folks, you want me to tell you what this was really all about? This is about Che flexing his muscles and trying to bring credibility to the apostles. Or it was about pleasing Marlene. That's all this was about. This did nothing. Racism is not really gone. All you did was brought witchcraft into the church. You embarrassed yourself. You showed people who you really are, that you have no discernment on what's right and wrong inside the house of God. That's all you really did. But Che, he was flexing those muscles. Apostle, only apostles can do this. Power, power, power from the apostles. Folks, this is destroying souls. Don't doubt me. These people, there is, I want to say there's blood on their hands, but the death of a human soul being sent to hell is what's on their hand. And that's just the way I see it. So I'm out of here. I think I need two aspirin. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. I hope to see you again. And I'll try not to yell next time.